We're here at Air Venture out in the bright sunshine. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm going to speak with William Wynn, who some people probably know as Mr. Corvair. You're kind of the Corvair authority and you run the Corvair College, it says on one of your literature items. Uh, what's your background with this engine, William? You go back with it quite a ways. Well, I've been an EAA member since 1989, and I've worked with Corvairs that entire length of time. Is that right? Yes. I'm a 1990s Embry-Riddle graduate uh, in uh, both maintenance and engineering, and uh, I've been an EAA member and wanted to do everything in home building. Well, all my uh, friends went off to work for the military and the airlines. Uh, home building was uh, my home in aviation. They probably envied you a lot, I'm guessing. Uh, some days, yes, very <laughs> much so. There's good days and bad in everything you do, but... Uh, well, I'm glad you're in this space. Uh, I got to ask you this: Corvair is an is a is a car company that we know, or a car product that we know from a long time ago. Where does one come up with a Corvair engine these days to begin to do anything with? Uh, well, uh, they made 1.8 million Corvairs. Oh, so there's a couple of them out there. Yes, 1.8 million Corvairs is a long, long line. And even if we only have, say, 5% left, there's still plenty to go around for everybody in the EIA. Most easily acquired locally by people uh, uh, on Craigslist, on eBay, lots of sources for core engines. So you're going out and you're finding a core, and uh, I suppose you pick and choose to get the best of those cores you can. I'm sure some have been abused or whatever, and you don't want those. And then what do you do with them, William? Uh, surprisingly, a lot of cores work really well because we're going to overhaul the entire engine. So you're not looking for a running engine. All you're looking for is a good rebuildable core. So the good hard metal parts is what you're seeking out, and then you're yes. going to add stuff to that. Yeah, we only want to verify that the engine's not internally stuck and it has the correct uh, engine codes and uh, letter codes on the cylinder head. All that stuff's in the conversion manual. Ah, I see. Okay. So you take this uh, component parts and you sell them as a kit as well? Uh, actually, it's not truly a kit. Okay. The nature of it is that a guy acquires an engine locally, uh, and he does. Oh, he'll get that part himself. Then. Yes. And you support that. Effort. I support that. I see so how he, that works. It, uh, he has the initiative. He goes out, takes the conversion manual, sources the core locally, takes the engine apart, and we're not trying to turn him into an automotive machinist. He essentially is going to do a disassembly. He's going to mail the parts off to our designated suppliers. Okay. They're going to bring them, bring them back while he learns. He'll reassemble it. If he likes, he can bring it to a Corvair college and assemble it there, and we can give it a test run. But still, he can run it at home, and we can go through all the verification that he did a good job on it. Pretty basic engine. We're very good at teaching. Combination works well for EAA people who like that motto, learn, build, and fly. Well, suppose you don't want to do all that stuff on an engine. Have you got any choices for them? Well, we'll adapt uh, what we're doing to the particular builder. We have uh, plenty of engines that we build every year, complete all the way through. Uh, those people also quite often come to Corvair Colleges to learn what's on the inside of their engine and learn operational details. So they can do maintenance and other things. Even though, But you have fully built it in that case. Yes, but still, 90% of our builders are building them themselves. Ah, okay. In some cases, we do the bottom end for them and get them a jump start on it, but we're, we're uh, adaptable. We're a mom and pop operation, and we're adaptable enough to adjust to each person's individual needs and skills and requirements. All I'm looking for is to get each person to stretch their own capability a little bit and go through the whole process and end up with a little better idea of their own personal capability and a lot more information about the engine that they're going to own and operate. Okay, and uh, so give us some of the basic parameters of the engine. I'm talking now about its, uh, its power output, its weight, some things like that that people might want to know because maybe they've thought about it but they haven't really investigated too far. We're going to try and help them do more of that investigation. But to tickle their interest, what would you give us the basic attributes of the engine that they should want? Well, well, first and foremost, I'm a Lycoming and Continental trained guy. So we worship at the temple of Lycoming and Continental, but we don't tithe at the temple of Lycoming and Continental. So the whole format of our entire program is largely patterned after what made Lycoming and Continental a success. Not just the direct drive, air-cooled, horizontally opposed layout, but in greater depth. Testing, training, all documentation, all of these things, and part approval that make make up certified aviation as we know it. I've 
patterned all of our efforts after this. Okay. There are alter alternative engine guys who worship at the Temple of High Tech, but I sort of worship at the Temple of Lycoming and Continental because they're kind of the success story in the industry. No question about it. Both companies do a great job. Uh, their engine designs are, are, are a little older than some of the others, but they've been doing a great job that whole time. So we got a six-cylinder engine here, horizontally opposed. I see all that stuff. What kind of power does it put out? We have three different displacements. The basic power output is 100 horsepower, but we have two larger displacement engines that are done on an eighth inch overbore and a quarter inch overbore. And those so are larger one, cylinders for... Yes, uh, for and those, those are 110 and 120 horsepower. Okay. What kind of airplanes are you using these engines with? They can cover a wide variety of airplanes. Uh, we have about 100 Zeniths flying, okay. uh, predominantly 601s and 650s. My wife and I had the first Corvair-powered Zenith ever about 10 years ago, and there's been a lot of follow-on to that. We have 750s reaching the market now, uh, flying. We have uh, 701s have flown on Corvair power, but the traditional uh, designs, peat and poles in great numbers, Corvair powered. Oh, is that right? Okay. Uh, Bernard Beatenpole, uh, patron saint of home building, first man ever to fly a Corvair motor in 1960. Is that right? Wow. And then from there we have. They were uh, still producing them then. Yes. Yeah. They were brand new. Yeah. And uh, quite an innovator. That man. So in in today, uh, still applied to a lot of airplanes, fly babies, VP twos, all sorts of traditional home builds. But some of the newer kits also quite popular. Excellent. And. Uh, uh, how does the weight compare to other engines? Not specific numbers, but uh, in the size and fitting it in cowls and some of those aspects. Well, the engine itself uh, is best compared to an O200. Okay. And it's just slightly lighter than an O200. Uh, it would directly compare to electric start engines. Uh, it's maybe five or ten pounds lighter than a typical okay. O200 installation. Well, that's a good benchmark for people then, because it's a widely known engine. But on, you know, for comparative purposes to bookend that, uh, a Rotax 912 or a Jabiru is about 35 pounds lighter, and an O235 Lycoming is about 35 pounds heavier. Okay. So Corvair can cover anything an O200 did. It can cover some of the things an O235 did, and it can cover some of the things that a VW did. And. Uh, Let's, let's talk a little bit about, now we always do this, so I'm going to give a point of caution, but I'm going to ask you about price. Folks, uh, as you're viewing this, uh, you may see this years into the future, so we'll give you the web address later. Please contact William and find out what the prices are then. Uh, but today, give us, uh, not exact, but broad parameters of what it costs to get one of these engines ready to operate. A turnkey engine from us is just a shade under ten thousand dollars for well, a one hundred horsepower. Quite a good deal, then. Yeah. For, for a one hundred horsepower engine. But the real deal is that if somebody took our manuals, information, and conversion parts and was willing to put a little learning and sweat equity into it, that same engine can be replicated at home with maybe, let's say, a hundred hours worth of work. Not a giant extension to their program, but a hundred hours worth of work. Uh, they could build the same engine for about fifty-five hundred dollars. Wow! Wow! That's so, a pretty inexpensive engine to get a hundred horsepower. Power. You know, I don't know if anybody does dollars for horsepower, but that would be right up there in the top of them, I guess. And it's not really all about the cost savings. The main motivator that keeps people coming back is that we're a really good accessible point where a guy looking for instruction on engines can really get to know it. A lot of people understand immediately that you need a flight instructor to learn how to fly. And this is taught in person. Same way with engine building. A lot of people understand that you go to classes and you could go to your airframe manufacturer and learn a lot more about building your airframe. And no one attempts to build an airframe without instruction or would expect to succeed. And in the world of alternative engines, a lot of engines are sold as buy it in a box. In our case, uh, we're willing to adapt that to anybody to their level of learning, capability, skill, and budget. So it's a pretty flexible engine to meet the variations in home builders. Well, that kind of makes you prefer Professor William Wynn of the, of the Corvair College. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but nice talking with you, Professor William. Uh, give us, a, we, we, we've touched on a few things I hope of interest to our viewers, but where can they get lots more information and actually get started if they're ready to do it? Where would you send them on the web, William? Our main website is flycorvair.com. Okay. That functions as our store and as our historical archives. Our news site is flycorvair.net, which is updated basically daily. Okay. Great stuff. We'll have more about uh, the Corvair engine as time goes on. We've currently got lots of information about all kinds of light sport, light kits, ultralights, and more on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining myself and William Wynn here at AirVenture Oshkosh.